There's a lot of research happening in TP53 mutated uh, acute myeloid leukemia. This is the subset with the worst outcomes of all the AML today. And unfortunately, none of our standard therapies, intensive chemotherapies, have shown any improvement. And we were very hopeful a few years ago with the emergence of HMA venetoclax that this would have a very good impact in TP53 AML. Unfortunately, now after reviewing data from three different studies, the initial phase 1B, the subsequent phase 3, the ALA A study, and then our own study at MD Anderson of the site of the intended venetoclax, we are seeing that even though remission rates can be encouraging with the CRCR rate of about 50 to 60% in TP53 mutated AML, the median survival in all three of those studies was between five and six months. So uh, many are even uh, questioning whether venetoclax is adding much at all. I do think it improves the response rate. And if our goal is to take patients to stem cell transplant, which really is the only potential period of option today for TP53, venetoclax may add a bit. But definitely, there is much, much more to be done. The other thing is we are now learning, and there's a lot of uh, research going into this area because it's probably going to be the major last frontier eventually in AML treatments, and we're finding that all TP53 mutations are not the same. Uh, there's a number of factors that can determine whether a particular TP53 mutation will have a uh, prognostic impact and what the level of that prognostic impact will be. So patients who have what we call high variant allele frequency TP53 mutations, greater than 40%, have been shown to be the ones that really have TP53 mutated disease. And two uh, separate analysis, one from MD Anderson published by Dr. Nick Short from our group, and one from Moffitt by Dr. Salman, they showed that, in fact, patients who had lower variant allele frequency, less than 40% TP53 mutation, especially if they did not have associated adverse cytogenetics and had only one TP53 mutation, those patients could actually do quite well and behaved almost like non-TP53 mutated. On the other hand, those who had either double TP53 mutations or TP53 with associated adverse chromosome changes or TP53 with high allelic frequency greater than 40%. Those were the true TP53 driven and should definitely go for clinical trials. So it's important to notice because there may be some of these low allelic burden, diploid TP53 single mutation that could actually do well with traditional intensive chemo uh, at our center. We're doing flag of venetoclax, for example, in transplant and could have two-year survival of close to 45-50% based on those two, those two separate analysis. But in general, the big question is what is the next step? And I think immunotherapy is really going to play a very important and major role eventually uh, for TP53 and for some of these other really difficult adverse cytogenetic populations like inversion 3Q, deletion 1P, uh, deletion 7, uh, others, because we know now traditional chemotherapy as well as apoptosis-inducing drugs and targeted therapies uh, depend very heavily on the central cell machinery, which is driven extensively by TP53 uh, and is defunct when you have the mutation. So the big group that is emerging as a potential uh, effective option for TP53 mutated is a group of drugs called CD47 SERP alpha antibodies. So we're very familiar with the concept of immune checkpoints from solid tumor lymphoma, where we block the interaction between PD-1, PDL one or CTLA-4 and its ligand. And this way we unleash the T cells and allow them to fight against tumor. Tumors, and this has, of course, led to multiple approvals in many, many tumors. We tried the similar approach in AML for many years. Uh, actually, a lot of the work pioneered here at MD Anderson by our group. And unfortunately, we found that there was some modest benefit, especially in certain subsets like extramedullary AML, post-transplant AML, low disease burden, high T-cell infiltration, marrow situations. But in general, this was not going to be a major blockbuster or step forward. But in that process, we have now started identifying other specific immune checkpoints. And one of those has emerged as CD47 SERP alpha, which is actually a macrophage checkpoint. So very similar to the concept of T cells here, we are blocking the interaction of the CD47 on the surface of the tumor with SERP alpha on the surface of macrophages. And by blocking that uh, interaction, we actually unleash macrophages, and then they're able to perform their routine function of phagocytosis and attacking tumor cells. And so there are now about six different CD47 SERP alpha. Some of them are antibodies. Some of them are bispecifics that link to both the SERP alpha or CD47 anti cells. Uh, and uh, these have now moved into clinic. The one that is the first in class and the most advanced in clinical trials in acute myeloid leukemia and in MDS is a drug called megrolumab. And data was shown at the last ash any meetings by both Dr. Salman from Moffitt and myself that the combination of azacitidine with megrolumab 
especially was effective in TP53 mutated AML with overall response rate of 70% and more importantly, a true CR rate of close to 50%, which is something we have never seen in frontline TP53 mutated patients with a median overall survival of close to 13 months. Now, this was early follow-up and a small cohort of patients. So of course, we are continuing to build on that experience and we'll hopefully present that data sometimes next year. But the signal looks quite promising here for TP53 mutated AML. Uh, and this has actually led to a phase three randomized study looking at uh, azacitidine with uh, megrolimab versus azacitidine venetoclax in TP53 mutated AML. This study is now up and running and has enrolled the first few patients and could hopefully lead to approval of uh, azacitidine megrolimab for TP53 mutated AML. At the same time, of course, uh, we still need to continue to get better. And so we have started a study here at MD Anderson combining azacitidine with venetoclax and megrolimab triple therapy for all AML, older, unfit, but also looking specifically to enrich with TP53 mutated AML in that population. And we will show that data hopefully later this year. There are other CD47 SERP alpha antibodies, TTI622 from uh, Tetrillium Group, Lemzoparlimab, uh, DSP107, um, uh, ALX uh, that are now in early clinical trials. And there may be differences both in safety and efficacy, but we think that this pathway could be very important and is being developed very extensively for TP53 mutated AML. The second approach that could be considered is using a drug called APR, which works directly to reactivate or uh, regenerate the function of TP53 at a cellular level. And there have been uh, early phase two trials uh, that were done, one in the US, one in Europe, that showed very high remission rates and true CR rates, leading to a phase three randomized study in MDS frontline TP53 mutated higher risk patients. Unfortunately, that phase three, in spite of showing an improvement in the CR rate from 33% to 22% with the addition of API, was overall did not meet the statistical endpoint and was terminated. So we do not know the future of this drug, although conceptually it sounds like it could be an important uh, path and could have some potential to be regenerated and rejuvenated in the future. And then the third big group, I think, for targeting TP53 mutated AML is going to be to use other immune-based therapies. And so there's a lot of excitement and emerging new immune-based therapies, such as NK cell-based therapies, both naked NK cells with high affinity CD16 receptors, as well as uh, NK CAR T cells. Um, and these are now showing some early signs of response and seem to be potentially agnostic to mutation, as well as, of course, CAR-Ts that are being developed towards novel targets in AML, CLL1, PIM3, IL1, RAP. Um, so I think that there is uh, still a lot to be done. I think immunotherapy will eventually probably play a very critical central role in the treatment of the TP53 mutated uh, AML. And uh, we are looking forward to hopefully seeing more progress uh, in the next two to three years for this very difficult, poor outcome population of patients.